We've all heard that San Diego is an amazing place to live with the best weather and vibe in all of California. And if you haven't, yes you have. All right, I know it's not for everyone, and that's why today we're diving into a topic that's going to save you from some serious face bombs if you've been considering making San Diego your next home. We're going over five things you need to know before moving to San Diego. Let's go. Welcome back. And if you're new to my channel and you want to learn everything there is to know about San Diego and surrounding areas so you can live like a local, make sure you subscribe and tap that bell to be notified so you can be first to learn about the market and lifestyle here in San Diego. My name is Jamie and my team and I help people from all over the country relocate and invest in real estate. So whether you're looking to make a move now or just planning ahead for your future, know that you can give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email because we want to help you make a smooth move to the best city in California where we do everything but the packing. Now, before we jump in, let's talk about what you're searching for on YouTube. When looking to move to a new area, you're most likely searching for things like best neighborhoods in San Diego, costs for living in San Diego, what are the job opportunities? What is there to do, right? What you're doing is you're hoping to find that insider tips and those real life experiences and pretty much get a sense of the what it's overall, what it's like living in San Diego. Well, grab your sunscreen because everything that you need to know, we're gonna be discussing in today's video. All right, we're kicking things off with traffic with a capital T. Now, I'm not saying that the traffic is as bad as Los Angeles because it certainly is not, but it can still be a real test of your patience. You will soon find out that rush hour can kind of feel like you're participating in the Daytona 500. So buckle up. Put on your favorite tunes or a podcast and practice patience or some really good breathing techniques. And if you're not looking to commute any longer than 30 minutes or so one way, then I do recommend living within 15 miles of work because anything beyond that can take upwards of an hour during commuting hours. Moving on to our second revelation is the cost of living. Ah yes, the beautiful San Diego lifestyle comes with a hefty price tag. In recent years, San Diego has dethroned San Francisco as being the least affordable city to live in in the United States. Housing prices can be as jaw-dropping as the ocean views. When looking to purchase a single-family home, the starting price will be around a million dollars, but there are other areas where you can purchase a home for under 800,000. It just depends on how close to the coast you want to be. If the condo lifestyle is what you're after, we got you. Just plan for a starting price of around 450,000 for a one bedroom. Now rentals are going to vary by a lot depending on where you go, but assume an average price for a one bedroom apartment starting around 2,800 a month. There's such a variety of housing here. It is not a one size fits all. And whether you're on a budget or not, we can find you something that makes you proud to call San Diego your home. And it might even come with a view. Yep, gas is still $5 a gallon. Going out to eat costs an average of $100 for two people. That's assuming drinks are ordered, or sometimes not. But there's also a bunch of free entertainment too. You just gotta walk out your front door and you'll pretty much be able to entertain yourself and your family for free. It's the luxury of being able to enjoy the outdoors year round. Hey, some of my best beach days have actually been in January. Even though it's an expensive city to live in, once people get here, they tend not to leave. There is a true quality of being able to live your life the way you want to live it 365 days a year. And because of this, people figure out a way to make it work for them in the long run. It's the cost of increasing your quality of life. Happy people are known to run rampant in San Diego. All right, here's a little gem for our third point, and that is June gloom. You think that the weather in San Diego is always perfect because that's pretty much the word around the street, but 
Mother Nature has a few tricks up her sleeve, and in May and June, a thick marine layer rolls in and casts this ugly gray shadow over the city, which is where the terms May gray and June gloom come from. But fear not, friends, because once July hits, it is nothing but sunshine and clear skies. And if you head about 20 miles east, you will be able to escape it in most areas but throughout the county, west of the 15th freeway is where it really experiences the, these gray skies. But it feels nice, it just doesn't look nice. And it's absolutely terrible for recording in. You ready for number four? We'll grab a beer, hold on to your surfboards, because we're talking about the culture. There is a huge culture of people who take surfing seriously, and you might find yourself feeling like a beginner, or as they say, grom amongst the pros. But hey, don't worry if you're not a natural born shredder. Just grab a board, hit the waves, and laugh at yourself as you wipe out like a true Californian. There are so many incredible surfing spots along the entire coast. And if you don't like surfing, that's okay. Staying dry and warm as you watch on the shore is pretty enjoyable as well. Now San Diego is home to a booming craft beer scene and let me tell you, it really is a thing here. I mean, there are over 150 breweries in the county. We might not have the best wine country, because we don't, but we certainly have great beer and great culture around it as well. Spend a summer here and you just might find yourself with an unhealthy obsession with beer flights. I am currently enjoying the view at the harbor at Epic Brewery, which is located in Shelter Island, which is in Point Loma. So some notable breweries coming out of San Diego are going to be Stone. There's Ballast Point, North Coast Brewing, Modern Times, Firestone Walker, and then something else that's gained a lot of popularity is June Shine, which has really kicked off since kombucha has become like a thing, very popular. What I personally love about the culture around breweries are the people. I got here, I met Ebig Brewery, like I said, and I instantly met a man. He told me all about this fishing tournament that he's going to down in Ensenada, and that's the culture around breweries. You get to like meet people, you get to meet your neighbors, your locals, or people from out of town, and people are just very friendly. There's, there's games, sometimes there's live music, and even if you don't drink beer, you can still enjoy the view. Did you know that 35 million tourists come through San Diego each year? That is more than half of what New York City gets each year, which is 66 million. That is a lot of people coming through San Diego. That means that you can be sure that there will always be something to do on any given day. But it also means that there's going to be crowds, especially at the beaches and in the downtown area. It really just depends on where you are. Of course, summers are going to be the busiest, but all seasons get their share, especially from people who want to escape the cold winters up north. One thing is that is a big bummer is that we don't have more sports teams. RIP to the San Diego Chargers, but we do have baseball, Padres, and Padres games at Peco Park are an absolute must. In my opinion, Peco Park ranks number one even above Oracle Park up in San Francisco, which again is my opinion. But if you haven't experienced Petco Park, well, we're in baseball season, so there's no better time than the present. The nice thing about San Diego is that it's so spread out. You don't have to live in the heart of where all the crowds and tourists will be. You can live in Hillcrest or North Park and still be within a 10 minute drive of everything. Or even moving more east into the suburbs and let's say Scripps Ranch, Poway or La Mesa. There you'll still be within a 15 to 20 minute drive of both the coast and downtown San Diego and be able to live in a more quiet, scenic and family oriented part of San Diego. Well, <laughs> cleared up today. I was tempted to redo the whole thing, but you know what? I decided, no, this is what the weather does and I can't just show it in its best light, literally. So the sun did decide to come out today and it's actually a stunning day. It's perfect. Well, there you have it. Five things that you should know before moving to San Diego. Now, knowing what you know now, is San Diego the best place to live in California? I want you to know that you can call, text, or email us anytime. 
All of our information is in the description below. Also, let us know in the comments what questions you have. If you are looking to relocate here and want to know more about a particular area, lifestyle, or just the culture, we are here to help and advise. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, friends, stay classy, San Diego.